Hi guys and welcome. Today I haven't got a project. This is more in line with a show and tell. It's a project I started about three or four years ago and never really got very far with it. Today I thought I'd have it a bit more of a go at it and this is the result so far. So here it is. This is my take on a rotary axis. For about three or four years now I've had this here already built. The only difference is I put this motor on it. There was a different motor on it before. This is the one I took off my Z-axis a month or two, a couple of months ago. Uh, so I've just put that on. I know this is a good motor. Works well with my uh, G540 stepper uh, driver and I might as well use it for something. This gearbox is a 31, 30 to 1 reduction drive and it's got a small amount of backlash in it. Now I don't know how that's going to affect it. I can probably use the backlash compensation to get rid of that, but it's a matter of just seeing. I have here a very vicious looking screw uh, to turn into my stock and on this side here I've got a dead center. The whole thing simply clamps to my table the center, uh, the, the tail stock clamps to the, the end of my table here and this bit here is just clamped down for a bit more rigidity. I'm driving this as the A axis and this is it turning. I'll now take it off the table and show you how it's built. Now the tail stock's very simple, it just consists of a piece of threaded rod. I'll just pull it apart here. It's a piece of, in my case, 8mm threaded rod. On that I put a handle that I made on the CNC machine and another knob. This is to lock it once I get it into a tightened position. This here is just a um, a very long nut, I can't remember what joiner I think they are. Again, 8mm. Now this is what's called a dead center. That's as opposed to one of these, this is a live center. The difference being, this doesn't rotate. The bearing surface is actually the wood that you're turning, that is between the metal here and the wood. On a live center, this piece is held rigid, but this bit here does the turning. It's got a bearing in it, and it rotates. I can look at updating to a live center later on, but I just wanted to get this built and just see how it works, or if it works. Now this is the, the more interesting part. As I said before, this is the old Z-axis motor. It's about 150 ounce inch. I've just got a coupler here going into this gearbox here. The gearbox is 30 to 1, so that's 2,000 steps because it's using, uh, on the Gecko G540 we have uh, micro-stepping of 10 pulses per step. So that's 2,000 steps to turn this one revolution. Multiply that by 30, you're looking at 60,000 um, pulses to make this do one revolution. The the reason this coupler here is so long is because this shaft is, so, is quite long coming out of the box here. Uh, I didn't really want to damage it. Um, if, it do, if this doesn't work, I might want to use it for something else. So again, at this stage, this is all just put together to see how it goes. If it works really well, it may never change. Uh, if it doesn't, I may change it. If this gearbox doesn't work, I may make a... Um, a belt driven one which was my original plan. I'd sort of shelved this but I thought I'd get it out and see how it goes. Now on the back here I've simply screwed on some plywood and put some bolts through to go into my table slots here. So when it comes to mounting this, this here with an appropriate amount of swearing will simply slot into the table and tighten up. This has a couple of uses. First of all, it securely holds everything in place. And second of all, the whole thing is located in the same place every time, and that's going to be important.
the center, the tail stock here, to make sure its adjustment is correct and that it's out from this board, the required amount, so that this here lines up, the center of this lines up with the center of this point here, I cut it a little bit narrower and added in two screws and then adjusted them so that they are the right distance out from this board. The reason I've made this whole thing fit into this step down part of my machine is to give me greater clearance. With this setup I should be able to turn something about four inches in diameter. If I put it up on this table here I'd be lucky to get an inch or two inches out of it at the most. So bring it down onto the step down part is a major improvement. My machine easily comes out well past this point so there's no issue there. If this turned out particularly successful what I would look at doing is cutting away this bit of my table and build my step down a bit lower and that would allow me to machine even larger parts but at this stage I just want to play and this will easily do the job. So as I said I can put my stock in here and once I've got this here up to the stock and I drill an e a hole in the end of the stock there I can just simply clamp this here in place like so. I can then I can then tighten this here up so it's good and tight in the stock and then tighten up this one here so that it's rigid, it can't go anywhere. Likewise because there's a little bit of movement here and probably what I should have done is put a, uh, a board like this here in the back to go into my back slot here but the easiest thing to do is simply put a clamp on the front here like so and that isn't going anywhere. Next I need to be able to power the stepper motor to get it rotating here. So I've wired up another plug for my gecko. I'm just going to feed it through that hole in my table there and I've just put the gecko drive into an e -stop, uh, the emergency stop position that's why the fault light here is on and I've removed the plugs for the A and the Y axis which actually move my router backwards and forwards. I can now plug in my rotary axis into the A. So now that I've got my Y axis and motors mis uh, disconnected from here I now need to get this cutter so it's dead center of this point here and also parallel. So I've actually got some hard stops on my each side of my table because I don't have limit switches on it to square up my table I simply bring the cut the machine forward until it runs into these stops and when it does that the whole thing's square. I can then start cutting, I don't have an issue. So what I need to do is I need to come up with a method that allowed me to set the distance here so that it matched these here. Because this is always goes into a set position, these little blocks which I made are simply a, a block 41 millimeters wide with a screw and a washer so I can just hook over and go into that slot there just so they don't fall off and I can now grab the gantry here and simply pull it forward until it rests against the two blocks here. Now this gantry isn't going to move, it doesn't move that easily it would take a fair amount of force to move that so I'm not concerned about it moving while I'm cutting. Again as I said because this is in a set position, this here I know is dead center of these two points. One thing I like about the Gecko G540 is that the resistor that sets the current for this particular motor is actually in the plug that I plugged into the drive. That saves a whole lot of hassle. I've created a brand new profile in Mac 3 for a rotary axis and it allows me to just simply use the Y keys on my control here to rotate the axis. Now the last bit I need to do is to figure out how to set zero. And if I've already got stock in place I won't be able to do that, especially if I'm going to be changing cutters part way through a cut. But what I know is that this particular piece here 
is 42 millimeters in diameter or 1.6 inches. So if I zero my cutter to this, I know that I'm 21 millimeters away from the center or 0.8 of an inch, whichever I might be using. You'll notice this is actually basically a sprocket and it actually came with this particular gearbox, so that's why I've used it. And by reduce, loosening the grub screws there, I can actually pull this off and replace it with some other type of uh, fitting here. So all I need to do now is to figure out how to set up Mac 3 to make the thing work properly and how to create some files to actually do some cutting. That sounds like a job for the Christmas New Year break. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully it'll inspire a couple of years to try making your own rotary axis over the Christmas New Year break. This is probably my last video for the year, so I'd like to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and all the best for the New Year. If you'd like to check up on progress of the rotary axis, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube and follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching and a very Merry Christmas. Cheers.